If you're in IT, you're likely managing endpoints for users working from home. But what happens when a remote user is fired? Here is your seven step guide for IT when your company fires a remote employee. There are additional security and logistical questions to consider when terminating a remote user's employment to ensure that the business is not compromised. IT needs to ensure corporate assets, systems, and data can't be taken advantage of. This means locking down, removing access, and returning assets securely. Now is the time to develop a process for terminating remote workers, and here are seven steps that I recommend taking. Step one, publish policies in the employee onboarding documentation. If your company was previously allowed 0% remote workers, you likely don't have a section in your employee handbook outlining the termination process for remote workers, making it important for HR to send out an update ASAP. Proper documentation will protect the business from the risk of lawsuits or general ambiguity by stating the policies for termination as well as procedurally what will happen. That way there is clarity of process for the business as well as for the employee when expectations are set properly upfront. Step two, disable credentials from Active Directory. Upon notification from HR, remove the remote employee's ability to continue working on or accessing corporate systems and assets. Step three, disable local accounts by pushing a remote script. Users may still be local administrators on their device and be able to log into the device to retain or offload data, so it's important to perform this step. If you're using Smart Deploy, you can perform this step by pushing a remote task pack. Step four, disable the device remotely. Again, if you're using Smart Deploy, you can push the remote wipe script in the library that will wipe part of the drive so that the computer is no longer usable by the remote worker, but the data is intact and protected by BitLocker. Step five, remove employee access from LastPass or any other password manager to ensure that the separated employee can no longer access corporate assets, even if it's from their personal devices. Step six, have corporate mail a box containing packing materials and a return shipping label to the employee so they can safely return their equipment. In the handbook, state that the employee agrees to mail all company-owned items back to HQ within a certain time frame, like five days. Make it easy for the employee to return hardware in an undamaged condition. And step seven, which is sort of a step 6B, determine if there is hardware or equipment that is not worth shipping back. If the cost to ship an item is more than what the item is worth, or if the hardware is likely worn out and won't be used again, don't request that it be returned. In many cases, the shipping costs for returning a monitor or a keyboard or mouse setup aren't worth it. There are my seven steps. Do you have additional steps that you take to keep your company safe when a remote employee is let go? Share them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.